Hey everybody, welcome back, it's Jonathan again. I was going through my phone, I was going through my old phone, and I found a couple videos that I had overlooked or I've uh, misplaced, and I've done some editing, and I'm going to go ahead and put them up. This is going to be a two-part series, and it's how I go about making my gun stocks. So the first part one here, it's going to focus on how I do the gun stocks, basically. Part two is going to revolve around the Model 25, the gun stocks, the rear bringing dimension into them. So without further ado and a little bit of editing, uh, let's just jump on in. So here we go. So just for illustration, this is my youngest 105B buck. He loves it. And this is one of the gun stocks that I like to create for the, you know, the long gun look. And I can make all of my gun stocks so far out of a premium North American white pine. I really like that, that knot we got going on in there. It sticks out on it. I know most people don't like knots, but I like different variations in wood. And this one's got it. So this is one of my gun stock styles. And here's the front. You can flip it over. We'll flip it over and look at it. This is a finished gun stock. It's shellacked. It doesn't have much of a dim dimension on it. I've rounded the edges over and all that good stuff. Just a simple long gun set. So when I start off with a, with a good solid plank, I'll go ahead and plane it down to thickness. This is going to be for my slim bobs. Whatever you want to call them. It's already planed down. I take them down to uh, 0 0.88, 0 0.89, you know. 0.89 is nice because for the final sanding, it creates a really nice, perfect fit for getting inside the slim model daisies. And that's the 105, the 38, 1938B, 1999 models, the Model 25, all of that good stuff. Whenever I do my plank, I'll go ahead and I'll rip it through the table saw first and I'll knock, knock the sides off of it. And this is real wide. And these are for my front stocks. I'll go ahead and knock them real wide. And then once I have, you know, the two pieces cut or three or whatever, have my primary temp pieces formed here, I'll go ahead and run them through the planer. I'll knock all the dead off the edges where it's a nice clean top, top layer. So once I got that, all that work out of the way, the next fun, this is where actual fun begins for me. Uh, okay, so you saw my boy's gun, and that's the style that I'm going to be throwing on the eBay store that I ran out of. And so what I got whipped up are templates. And I need to do some of these, but I'm also going to get caught up on some of my Model 25 rear stocks. I've got some flat bottoms up, you know, flat straight on down, just like the really old 25s. But I'm missing some of these newer style models with this hook bottom. So I'm going to get caught up on these. So for starting off this process, I have one question that's occasionally brought up, you know. Why do you like North American white pine so much? Well... One of the answers is, you know, it's easy to work with. It's not super hard. It's very forgiving. And also, another key thing that I take away from it all is if you sand down a Bear Daisy gun stock, 10 times out of 10, you're going to come out with the same exact grain pattern through and through. There's nothing clashing about it. There's nothing that really attracts to the eye. There's, there's, it's so simple and so plain that it's, for me, in my opinion, it's just not that catchy. Yes, there are gun stocks out there that look absolutely beautiful and amazing, but it's kind of like, you know, you go over to Shane Bruce's channel. He, he enjoys using the curly maple. And it's a beautiful wood. For me, I prefer the white pine because 
you know, truly with each customer, they're getting their own unique grain pattern throughout this whole thing. There's nothing identical with each gun stock that I have ever sold aside from the shape. So to start things off, what I like to do is with my template, I'll come up here to the very tippy top and I'll squeeze out every last bit of square inch of wood that I can. And I'll go ahead and I'll trace them out. Just using a number two pencil. It ain't gotta be no high point pencil, no nothing like that. I'll just come through and trace it out. And then I'll flip it. And then I'll continue this process a good ways down the board. Whenever I've got my templates formed up on the board, we'll come down here to this Red Rider stock that I've got templated up. And here's where some fun's going to happen. This is an OEM size, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stretch it out with this ruler a little bit. I'll get it lined up. And I'll go ahead and bring that bottom on down a little. Run it on up, get it in line. We'll come up to the top here. Let's stretch it out a little bit. Not as much as the bottom. Well... See, this is where imagination tends to flow. I'll go ahead and bring it on out. Now what I can do is I can go ahead. I can come at the top. And let's give it a nice deep hook through here. Let's go ahead and come on up in here real well. Kind of hard to get around that camera tripod. But let's just bring it on down to the bottom. We'll make the top stick out more than the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and do that. We can come up here to the top. Let's give it a sudden drop. Let's come on down here like this. And let's try to follow this pattern right here. We'll do that at the top. It, you'll notice on the stock it comes down straight, you know. Let's go ahead and bring it on down. We'll try to keep the curve flowing with the lever flow. And if you get too sharp, this is the advantage of, you know, operating with a pencil. You can go ahead and go ahead and erase and touch up your blemishes and all that. It's nice to just let your imagination flow on the board, you know. You can really make this any way you want to. Maybe we'll just come down here. We'll have some fun with this one. We'll go ahead and bring this on up. And what do we want to do here? We got the flow of the handle coming down. Got that. Hmm. Maybe we'll go ahead and give it a little sharper of a... We'll bring it on up like that. We'll come up a little higher on top and then we'll just come up here with this ruler and we'll run a new bottom line. We'll do it like that and then we'll go ahead and erase this bottom out. Or we could just go ahead and ignore it all together. <laughs> it's just less of a hassle whenever it comes to concentrating on the next step. So upon second thought and some revisions, I've opted in to go with the 1938B Red Rider stock sets because I've been getting some demand on them too. I'll work on the Model 25s and focus more on them at a later time. But for now, I'm going to get caught up on the straight levers. For the straight levers, this is the same incorporation that I used on my uh, Bleeding Blue rifle. Yeah. So, if you go back and look at the Bleeding Blue video, you'll see what you got set up. And this is the same style that's used on my boys also. Coming down to the Red Rider, this is the shape that I've got shaped out. I've... 
upped it a little bit, come back, going to put a notch tail flat back in it. And I'm going to go ahead and get these jigsawed out, and then we'll move on to that next step I keep talking about. So here's my jigsaw planks that I've got sawed out, and we got the 105, the Red Riders, the 25s, I only had enough template space left over to do two of them, and I've got some really big fat front pump four stock ends that I'm going to do for these. And these are going to be a set that I'm going to throw on the eBay store. It's going to be a special set, each of them, just because of the fat front end four stock. They're a lot easier to handle. You know, if you got old arthritic cans or anything, it's really going to help the user out. They're easy to grab, super, super comfortable all around, really. Now let's move on over here. We're going to get jigged up, and we're going to start our scroll saw work. And here we are with our 105 blank, our 105B straight lever. It fits a lot of other straight lever models as well. And I'm, what I'm going to start doing, guys, whenever I put these up on the store, I'm not going to start, I'm not going to pre-drill these holes. I'm going to leave that up to you in case you know that you have a street loops, you know, a straight lever, and it's got a different design, you know, a different model. But you know that you can make this fit in your straight lever. I got some feedback on this. It was a question that I had asked, and I appreciate my audience for, you know, throwing their two cents in on it. So this is what I'm going to offer you guys. No pre-drilled holes. I'll leave that up to you. So let me get the rest of these whipped out, and we'll move on to that next step. Once I got all the blanks finished up, I'll go ahead and come through with the orbital sander over here. And it's really good for getting up in all the tight hook spots. You know, up in here, the front's real tight up here. The orbital sander just finishes up the side, it, all around. Smooths it all up real good. And that gets us started for the next step. And if you were wondering, this is the Model 25s. 1938B Red Rider rears and the 105B rears. So I've got my Model 25 stock set off to the side, and for this next step, we're going to come over here to my little makeshift portable router table. I've got the Ryobi 18-volt portable router, made it up to an old Sears Craftsman little tabletop router set that was discarded years ago. And i got a little special bit set up. I can't remember what it's called, but let me get the camera set up, and... We're going to take a look at cutting our lever notch. And here we are with the finished lever notches. Now since we got these knocked out of the way with the lever notches, I'm going to step over here and I'm going to grab our long sticks and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start doing the barrel notch for the barrel and this is going to begin the process of making the four stocks. So let me stop, get some bits switched out and I'll run a few passes through that and let you all check.
with our barrel notch relief cut this for this piece right here is now ready to be individually cut for each four stock since this task is out of the way we can put over the round over bit into the router and we can router these all out to shape so let's go get started on it the gist of the part one guys thanks for having me uh, I really appreciate it I hope this brought some insight into how I go about doing it so I guess we'll just stay tuned for part two I'll try to have it uploaded here by this evening as well so thanks for tuning in guys later <laughs>